This is the day the Lord has made.
that two weeks ago. So we have prayed for the designated three family of the church, and this week uh, we are praying for Ronnie Dixie Little. Uh, they ask for pray for Andrew Feldman, uh, who has a health issue. Pray for his health and safe during the time of this. And also, I talked with Jackie. I mean, uh, Jacqueline Lott. And she has some health issues. She has a foot swollen and the heart issue. And then she uh, started taking the medication. But other than that, that she's doing well. So please keep her or her health and stay healthy uh, for the praying for her. Also, the Cynthia Harmon Miller, uh, pray for her health and safety. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that we have gathered together worship in the house of the Lord this morning. We are here to sing our praises to you, to celebrate the fast approaching coming of your Son, to learn ways of justice and hope for all your people. We lift up the names and situation which have, we have spoken and unspoken. Lay your loving hands of healing on all those people who struggle with health issues, who grieve over the loss of the loved one. Especially, we lift up the frontline workers, doctors, and nurses police officer and teachers. We lift up those who are suffering by the COVID-19 for their healing and recovery. We also lift up the family of victim of the COVID-19. Lord, give them your comfort. We pray for the leaders of this nation, guide our leaders, so that they learn your way of love, mercy, and compassion. Thanks with those people who have found your love and power in their lives and who are involved in ministries of justice and hope. Empower our heart and spirit to be strong witnesses of your presence in our lives. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
later first advent candle, a symbol of hope. We light our second advent candle, a symbol of peace. Light our third advent candle, a symbol of joy. When I look around, I see shadows of sadness, families who have lost loved ones, people in prison, people who are, who are isolated and feel it on their own. When I look around, I see shadows of grief, people dreading the holiday because of painful memories, because they previously divorced because they don't want to spend another Christmas alone. In the face of sadness, we light a candle of joy. In the face of grief, the face of loss, we light a candle of joy. May the light from this candle overwhelm the world. May the light from this candle say to all, God's joy is coming on earth as it is already in heaven. Brothers and sisters in Christ, be not afraid. God's joy is at hand. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Oh, come, come, Emmanuel, verse 3.
Let us pray. Lord, it's time to listen to the message. Open our hearts and ears so that we can take your words into our hearts. In your holy name I pray. Amen. This is the third Sunday in Advent. We lit the Advent candles. The third candle, which is pink, is a symbol of joy. This Sunday we remember rejoicing. We are rejoicing in preparing for Christmas with the birth of Christ and with the idea of Christ's return. In the Gospel of Luke, the angel of Gabriel came to Mary and said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. And in Luke's Gospel, the very first Christmas night, the angels appeared to the shepherds to share the good news and sing. So let me share the video clip with you. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior. Yes, the Messiah. The Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. God is with us. 
Matthew's Gospel tells us the Christmas story in a particular way. It tells us the reason why Jesus came and God incarnated to be present with us. God took on flesh and entered our world as a human being. When we, took, when we look at Jesus, we know God is with us. Jesus is God. And God is like Jesus. And there is God and God is with us. The word Emmanuel is from the prophet of Isaiah about 735 years ago before Jesus' birth. In the story of Isaiah, the prophet wrote, the, uh, wrote that the child would be born to a young woman. The child was a sign of God to people that God was with them. God made a promise to deliver Judah because there was a war in, at that time. In the midst of the war, people of Judah was terrified because their enemies attacked them and destroyed them. God was telling them, I'll give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, shall bear a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel. You watch the child to grow up, and it is a sign to no matter that you may see, you may not see it, you may be afraid still, you have not seen the deliverance yet. But look at the child, the name Emmanuel. It reminds you of what I promise, that I'm with you, so you will be delivered someday. I'm going to take care of you. You will see. Trust in my promise. So that is the, the historical context from Isaiah. Matthew know the story and what would be happening through Jesus. In Matthew's gospel, there is so much like that and yet so far beyond that. Because in Jesus, God is coming to us. The meaning of Emmanuel is like this. It's no matter what happened to you, I am with you. You can't see my deliverance yet, but it will be come and someday it's going to be okay. The idea is that God is with us. That is a part of our faith as a Christian. Jesus came to demonstrate the God who is visible. This is demonstrating who, God, who Jesus is and who we trust. When we see, we, when we see Jesus' birth, life, and ministry, and death and resurrection, we can see a clear picture of how God is with us and how we understand the Incarnation. What is incarnation? Incarnation means God took on flesh and entered our world as a human being. That means God experienced humanity. Jesus is not merely God wrapped in human flesh, God in a body. God became human in Jesus. He experienced what we experience as humans. In Jesus, God experienced temptation, love, hunger, joy, fear, friendship, grief, doubt, rejection, and death. He wept, he wept, he bled, he suffered, he died. God knows the smell of rain on a summer day. He tastes a meal of warm bread and smoked fish with a glass of wine. He knows the joy of sharing it with good friends. He's seen with the same eyes we see with the beauty of a sunset. He's known how the human heart feels when it loves deeply and intensity of grief when a good friend dies. 
He knows how it feels to laugh and cry, to be angry and afraid as we experience these things in the flesh. When we see Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection throughout the gospel, we can see Jesus as a divine nature as well. Jesus healed the sick, opened the eyes of the blind, forgave sinners, miraculous feed the multitudes, and even raised the dead. He controlled nature, walks on the water, casts out demons, and defeats death. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19, there are so many things that have changed in our lives. We have practiced wearing masks to have a six feet, that is six feet apart of a social distancing and to sanitize our hands frequently. Still, this disease has affected and spread in our life. As of December 12, more than 300,000 people, they died in the U.S. from the COVID-19. More than 5,000 people died in Maryland, and 151 people died in Carroll County. The number of cases is increasing in the community, the states, and throughout the whole world. We feel frightened and fearful, especially it is worse for those who are elderly and for those who have health issues. We see the grief and feel heartbroken for the family who could not stay during the last minute of the loved one who died from COVID-19. And we see the anxiety and fright of the family. They could, they could not be with their family when they were hospitalized. During the time of frightening, fear, grief, God is talking to us. I am with you. I understand your pain, your fear, your grief, because I've been there as a human being. I believe that Emmanuel's message, God is with us, is speaking to us more clearly through the season of Advent and Christmas. Even now, in the midst of a pandemic, the world has changed in so many ways for the better. There is tragedy and death, but there is life, hope, goodness, and love. One piece of good news is the, I think that you heard the news, the FDA on Friday approved Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccines for emergency use. There was a result of people who devoted resources to develop antiviral treatments and vaccines. I've heard the people of our congregation have, have, have made more phone calls to check on neighbors, family, and friends, and have sent a card to make people feel they are, that they are care about. They cannot get together physically more than before, but they are trying to strive more to connect to one another through the social media and support spiritually. We are told many stories of those who care for persons with the COVID-19 in, in the hospital and how nursing homes have cared for people. We look at the story of Jesus' birth, life, death, and resurrection, and this idea, God is with us, Emmanuel, takes care of that for us. Jesus is with us no matter what our situation or circumstances are. We look to see the, what the people in the Bible went through when we see how Jesus ministered to them and believe he has the same affection, the same concerns for us. As Emmanuel, he 
seeks to remind us that He is always, always with us. And we do not need to be afraid. And He calls us to go in His name to show God's love to others and to allow God's image to see in us. Amen. which you have longed to us to make light shine in the darkness, peace an attainable goal in all conflicts. We offer these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen.
now receive the benediction. As you leave this place, may God's love surround you and uphold you and empower you to be agent of love in this world. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.